It's happy hour again from Uptown New Orleans. Hello, I'm Grant Morris. Happy hour is part of the family of shows on the podcast network. It's NewOrleans.com. When you walk into a bar in New Orleans and you pull up a bar stool, you never know who's going to be sitting on the other side of you. What you do know is no matter what they look like, what they're wearing, whether they just got out of a limo or just got out of jail, they're going to be happy to talk to you because that's New Orleans and this is Happy Hour, a cocktail-fueled 60 minutes of random conversation with folks who have nothing in common. Other than we're all New Orleans in a bar, today we are at the fabulous Wayfair on Ferret Street, just off Napoleon Avenue. Wayfair is a restaurant and a bar serving handcrafted food and spirits where Chef Kevin White puts fine dining into a sandwich. He actually does, doesn't he, Andrew? Yep. Yes, he does. How many of you guys have uh, had anything to eat here? Oh, yeah. Sam yes. has. Mac, have you? Yep. And I Rosemary. just had a bite of Jennifer's sandwich. Jennifer's your assistant. That's one mm-hmm. of the best sentences I've heard <laughs> this whole week, Andrew. Well, I meet Rosemary, who I've never met before in my life, and she says, this is Jennifer, my assistant. Too easy. <laughs> nice. I know. I'm blessed. I just fucking awesome. hate people having She's my best How friend, too. So is she kind of really? Works out. Yeah. Why didn't you say this is oh. Jennifer, my best friend? <laughs> because and I'm trying I to look jealous. official here. <laughs> official? I just feel so jealous. I would love an assistant, wouldn't you? That'd be great. God, I'd love yeah. it. Wouldn't you guys? Yes. I mean, Sam, Mac. Oh that's how I make money. I'm an assistant. You are an assistant. Oh, yeah, that's it says here, right, it says that. It says uh, Mac Ellsfeld is a cast assistant. Mm. Ellsfeld. And then we've had two of your, uh, we had both your parents on the show. In the yeah, time. I know. <laughs> Which is funny given the circumstances, actually. Yeah. It says here, Mac Ellsfeld is a cast assistant in the Louisiana film business says you've worked on nearly 40 films that's correct that's a lot of films yep. assisting some of Hollywood's most influential stars like Jonah Hill is he really one of Hollywood's most influential <laughs> stars or uh, do you just say that in your bio no I usually have to say it. that was I pulled that from something we had put for, for one of our films we did and um, yeah I don't know influential I think he who's he influencing exactly <laughs> Yes, people are trying to lose weight, <laughs> flush weight, weight awkwardly. He, how did he lose all that weight? Uh, well, the, the secret is he wears like really tight. No, he really does. He wears like, like stuff spanks? that sucks his yeah, Manx, let's like call full it. body spanks. Wow, yeah. I'm not kidding. He really does. <laughs> this is what and you, you find out when you're somebody's assistant. <laughs> Jennifer can tell us all kinds yeah. of shit about you. I bet Rosemary. Crazy stuff about me. Well, Jennifer's your assistant. Mac is. <laughs> this, Joan Hill didn't think he was going to be going. You well, know, I'm a body painter. Sort of People think podcast. that's crazy, but <laughs> what's that? I'm a body painter. That's kind of. I know. Wild. We're going to get to that in a minute. That cool. is wild. <laughs> I, have you been to to? Ro- you wouldn't have been to Rosemary's website, of course, Andrew, because we don't do all that much research for the show. But I did just before we came on here. Mm-hmm. It's absolutely extraordinary. Can Thank we, you. Did you bring any photos or anything? Um, I wasn't expecting anything visual happening here besides voices and yeah. imagination. That's well, yeah. <laughs> it's a theater yeah. of the mind. Well, we have to oh, sort of describe what you do. You take somebody's naked body and paint it. Oh wait, I have a flyer. Okay, oh, wait nice. till you guys wait till yeah, you guys this see this. My okay, have a look at this, Andrew. All pass right. that around. Oh, here we go. Everybody can get one. Everybody gets one. Oh, we, we have flyers awesome. with us everywhere we go. Okay. Cool. All right. This is why you have an assistant. She should be handing <laughs> us these flyers. Yeah, right. Jennifer, what are you doing? She's eating a sandwich. Which one did you have? The special. The special. How was it? Awesome. Fantastic. Fantastic. There you go. Just like I said. Mm-hmm, it tastes it, so good Chef to me. Kevin White was a, he was a chef with Mario Batali in New York before he moved here and opened this restaurant. Really? And he's a real fine dining chef, but all he wants to do is make sandwiches here. So he puts all this fine dining experience into a sandwich, and the sandwiches are amazing. I'll have to have one they really before I go. Are, aren't yeah. they? They're really yeah. extraordinary here. So okay, so what? Okay, Andrew, go ahead. Yeah, yeah I was cool. just going to say I was reading this flyer, and I think it's a really good idea. So Thanks. I'm gathering that there is a body painting show slash what are these fantastic performers are they burlesque performers or they're or everything they? they're okay. burlesque and belly dance and hula hoop and cool. aerial and we have a sword dancer cool. we so have a grinder girl so not only is it a gallery of the body it's it's a uh, it's performing yeah it's on show pieces. it's like a yeah. stage show that's great like that's a circus fun. cool that's so this awesome. is the, uh, if you listen to this and you have not got yet to march the 20th is tomorrow it? night 2015 no. <laughs> coming up <laughs> We're recording this on March the 19th, but people listen to this for days, weeks, and months, and y- even yeah, years. Yeah, and we do this away, every so year. Every year. Oh. So, oh, okay. So, mm-hmm. if you missed it in 2015, right. you could catch it in Come back around the horn. <laughs> yeah. So, what is it? It's a bunch of naked people that you painted. Well, I haven't painted them. 20 other artists have. I don't have time because I'm directing the whole thing. But um, right. artists from all over the world and country come to New Orleans to paint their bodies. And, and it's fine art body paint. So, it's... It's really well done. They take hours and hours to do it. And it, and we're not really so much about the nudity as the art. Once they're painted, you wouldn't even know they were naked. Does it matter how much 
I'm into one or the other if I pay the twenty dollar ticket, you know. No, they're the same, but I would. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> no, you know, I just I, one I or the other. You mean like nudity or paint? Right. No, I was oh, going to no, ask you when you walk in. Are you here for the nudity or here? Well, you know, I just think it's it's proper to acknowledge the fact that the body painting is in even burlesque burlesque shows. There, you know, there's that element that guys love that I'm going to go here and see shapes that I don't get to see for 20 well, bucks. Well, true. It's <laughs> very often. sensual, right. I would say. But we have a different kind of group, you know, demographic than the ones that are going to go to a club and look at naked bodies. Yeah, yeah, right, of course. Right. right. They're more it's really more of a cultured artistic, you know, crowd that comes. They're really into the art form of it. Now, how do but you, bodies Matt, are beautiful too. Ahead. Yeah, where do you get the models from? Are you mm. is it I've been women only or No, we have men too. Can I audition? Join Hill. Yeah, you want to do it next year? We're, uh, we're always looking for talent. I'm going to have to I'm pretty hairy, so I'm going to have to I, I was going to Yeah, ask we'll about have my to my shave you. Yeah, if you're hairy, yeah. we do have to shave. Mm-hmm. All of it? Oh, Who does the shaving? That's a, that's a well, record. the artist or hopefully Jennifer's yourself. Jennifer's putting your hand up your <laughs> assistant. That's why you need this. Wow. So you have to shave off somebody's all the hair if it's not already Well, we really let them do that. It's not something that the body painter necessarily wants to do oh. yeah. right. <laughs> have you Mac have you ever thought about having your entire body painted ah uh, well yeah but yes you have okay yeah. right there we've got a problem <laughs> what about what yeah. about could you know those spray tan machines could we yes. fill it with nair <laughs> yeah you know that's you could I wouldn't want to do that myself does yeah that burn? it does burn that's, that's right I does it? I mean, yeah yeah um, um, Sam, how did you hear when, oh, well, when I was in high school I was on the swim team and for uh, Championships at the end of the year, our coach made us all shave. Uh, cause you, okay, which you high school is this? Uh, St. Louis U High up in Missouri. In Missouri. I, yeah, I grew, I grew up in the. The in coach the, made uh, the, the guys in yeah, the swim all, team uh, shave. Yeah, all seventy I, of us. Okay. So, did yeah. you do like a check afterwards to make sure yeah. it was when we'd show done up, right? We'd like no, well, <laughs> uh, it was weird. We were supposed shave your arms, arms, and legs. legs uh, about. About a third of us would this shave our heads. I would not. This is but, high um, school. Yeah. What yeah. kind of speed differential are you looking at if you shave your arms and legs on a not high school swim team? Not that much. It's not the yeah. fucking Olympics so where exactly. you know, it's down that's to the hundredth of a exactly. second. Well, well maybe that's at, what he was reaching for. Right. But I guess if you have to encourage kids, you know. <laughs> right. Well, uh, one Go year. Uh, Let's get to the near part. Yeah. One, one year. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. One year, a buddy of mine decided he didn't want to spend the like hour shaving his entire body mm. and just bought like two cans of Nair mm-hmm. and just showed up the next day and was like just red. Oh yeah. shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that's not something I would want to put in a spray tan no, machine. Not so much. <laughs> yeah. They have mm. other stuff that you can buy at the you know at the drugstore that takes all your hair off, but I can't think what it's called now. Um, something or other. I bought some. My friend told me to buy it, and I bought it. And it says on the thing, um, it, he wasn't. He didn't tell me to buy it. He told me that he uses it. And I thought I'll try it as well. He puts it on his head and his face and all over his you know shoulders and huh. back and everything. And it says uh, it says for colored people only. It says right on the label. <laughs> so <laughs> I called him up and said, this, "Do you ever read this label here?" And he's like, "Yeah, don't you use it." Do not use it. <laughs> 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 All right. So that, I can't think of the name of that thing, though. It's right. I got it wow. like at Walgreens or something. It's not like some weird thing. Huh. That's no. true. Mm. Yeah. Anyway, so once I'm shaved down with whatever I use, mm-hmm. and you start, you get to work. And what paint do you use? We use, like, professional body paint. There's so is, many. Well, there's a special particular. Yeah, thing. there's lots and lots of companies. And what is that, like, it's not latex and it's not water No, we based. don't use latex. Well, what is it, though? It's, uh, it's alcohol-based. It's water-based. There's two different um, varieties and lots and lots of different manufacturers. There's um, airbrush body paint. There's cake body paint that you put on with brushes and sponges. What do you it's use? It's metallic. Do you use a brush? I mostly am a brush and sponge person, but I recently got the airbrush because everybody's doing it, and you gotta up your. Does it go faster? Game. Not it just really. Just looks different. It's got that airbrush look, I guess. Yeah, it, it's a little more like on this card, like the body yeah. the transition between the white and black and red. That was airbrush. It's a lot easier right. to kind of transition and so not be so thick. So how would we describe? I mean, how would you describe to someone who's listening to this what this looks like? It's just, it's an extraordinary. It's like. It's a painting, mm. exactly. Like on a human body, but it looks. I don't. What I mean, kind of floral and tribal. Mac, and you're a writer. You explain it. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, I don't really know how to describe this. I mean, it's. There's a lot writing on this, Mac. Yeah, I. So you know, come up with something. What comes to mind is like professional wrestling when they put like makeup <laughs> on. But like, like I wouldn't have thought of I'm that. Not, <laughs> I'm not really into 
This is fine art. This isn't a professional no, wrestling. No, I know, <laughs> but I'm saying, like, <laughs> it's bullshit. the detail that has to go Are you go mocking me? No, I'm not, no. <laughs> That's the no, best he can do. He's a professional writer as well, as well as being a cast <laughs> assistant. I'll tell you more about him. Yeah. He, not only has he worked with influential stars like Jonah Hill, Kevin Costner, now he is quite influential. Yeah. Okay, yeah. what does he wear in the underwear department? Uh, no, he's good. He just, he's, he's, he eats whatever the hell he wants. He doesn't work out. He's always He does not shape. work out. He doesn't do anything. And he's like just gifted. It's weird. Wow. Yeah. But he wears sunglasses everywhere, so... Why yeah. is that? So just a sensitive eyes. star thing. You wear glasses. Oh, it's just an affectation. Yeah, it's cool. Oh, I thought he's a cool guy. Oh, okay, he's, he's nice. Awesome. He's awesome. Okay, what's Andrew Garfield like? Really nice guy. Who yeah. is Andrew Garfield? He's uh, uh, Spider-Man. Yeah. Or was mm. Spider-Man? I think he got fired. Mm. He got fired off Spider-Man. Oh, you yeah. know who They're was rebooting he? it again for like the 15th time. So. He was like the friend in The Social Network. You know, yeah. you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. The like shorter guy with the dark hair that ends up suing him that isn't the... Wins. I didn't you know see it. Not oh, the no, Winkle no. boss. <laughs> not yeah, the not somebody. <laughs> I was trying to see it from the previews, but I couldn't. I couldn't put it together. You Doesn't did, matter. Did you see the movie? No. I didn't. Oh, it's a good movie. It's a yeah, movie. So yeah. Yeah. It is. A I mean, he's a British guy. It's yeah. Not, you know. Okay. What about Alan Arkin? That's my last one I have on the list. I thought you thought there was going to be forty here, right? But uh, there are more. I just didn't. You know. This is all you know, I've got. He didn't want to brag. Well, yeah. I'm bragging enough. So, what's what's the biggest superstar you've worked with? Um, I've been working with Will Ferrell a lot lately. Uh, that must be interesting. But yeah, yeah. I mean, it's the nicest guy ever. And he sh- he only shoots movies down here, so like or he's You mean he doesn't shoot any movies that aren't well, made in Louisiana? Just, it's been very fortunate that like the last I think he's done like five or six movies down here. He's got a, he's coming back. He just left. He's coming back in uh September. And I think he's in Rome doing Zoolander two right now. But Zoolander yeah. two, yeah, what a right. life! And what is yeah. he? What um, what's he like to hang out with? Just not funny, or is he? No, he's always funny. He's, he's funny, always, always funny. funny. Yeah, he just he, they like to, him and uh, this other producer like to. Uh, they, everyone pranks each other, and they <laughs> pranked me a lot. They messed with me a lot, <laughs> and I got to prank back. But like, if my prank would go too far, I could get fired. So like half the time, I'd be like, well, this might cross the line if I do this. I get big laughs, <laughs> but, like, they might get pissed, and I might get fired. And I always just did it regardless, but, like... Um, what are we talking about exactly in the prank? Like, era? one of the one of the, one of of the the producers, like, his his team is, like, it's him and Adam McKay, who's a director, and this guy, Chris Henchy, who's a writer with him. Uh, and Chris Henchy is the one that kind of pranks everybody. And so when I would go get his car, when we'd be done for the day, I'd, I'd pull it off the set so we can get in and go. And I'd always, on Sirius XM, I think they took the station away. They used to have this, like, porn station. Or this like sex station. I didn't find it. Someone, <coughs> Por- someone told mm. me about porn it. Porn station on, on what are we talking about? On Sirius XM. On it's the serious. Se- I think it's gone now. I don't there's think a it's porn anymore. radio. Station? Or it was like a sexual radio. But they would like these women would get pretty out there. So I would okay. I would blast that, <laughs> and then I would kill his car, <laughs> and then it would be like right where the crew was all like when we, everyone would leave for the day. He'd be the first one, but everyone was around him, and he would turn his car and would just be blasting porn. <laughs> okay, and, that's um, a pretty good prank. That is cool. But, like, when you're in front of the whole crew, there's, like, the risk of, like, him being embarrassed and then just firing right. you, which didn't happen. And so. what kind of prank do they do to each other, these? Uh, they buy billboards a lot of each other, and they put up billboards. Like, Henchy, it's his birthday Monday, and they have a billboard they're putting up in Atlanta with his face with, like... Well, don't blow uh, it in case he doesn't. No, I know. <laughs> I doubt that he'd be listening to this, but you never know. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to send him a link. I'll ruin the surprise. But yeah. So they buy billboards like it, or look wherever the other guy is. Yeah, exactly. So and they the, put something like what, for example? Like um, Will's manager, uh, they used, like he, you know, it's in L.A. and he's like a really tough guy and he doesn't like uh, putting himself out there in publicity basically. And they put a billboard with his face and it was like, uh, Jimmy Miller, the, the the greatest manager in the world. I will represent like anybody. Call me, and it will like put his number on there. Oh, like they that. put his real nice. phone number. I think so. Yeah. Oh, nice. Okay, that's like, good. That sucks. Yeah, I mean, if you have money and you like pranking people, I think billboards the that's the right way to go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> How much is a billboard? If I we all know, chipped in, fifteen grand maybe. Oh, that's fifteen. Wow. I don't know. I'm just, really? I'm just for a prank. For a prank. Yeah. Well, these guys are making. What does he get paid? Will. What's his I think, I think movie rate? Probably about fifteen million a movie. Wow. Fifteen Jeez. million a movie. So yeah. fifteen grand for a billboard isn't zero point one percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 not yeah. bad. Yeah. That's a pretty cheap prank, actually. Mm-hmm. And it says here that you're a part of a uh, a comedy screenwriter, a trio called Abby Normal. That's right, the I Abby Normal Comedy Trio. 
Yeah, we have two more kids. Uh, this guy, Andrew Megason and Gray Ward. They're not your actual kids, though. Right? No, no, no. They, I'm sure, you know, Gray might have a list, you know, illegitimate kids, but, but we're, we're all just friends. Right. Yeah. And so you've made, you're a comedy writing and directing trio, or you, yeah. you direct and write? I direct. Well, we're, we're, we all act in it. Um, I, we basically, we, we started writing screenplays a couple of years ago, maybe about five years, four years ago. Right. And then one of our feature screenplays we shot and we did the festival circuit and we premiered at uh, New Orleans Film Fest a couple years ago. Which film was that? That's called Father Like Son. Father Like Son. Yeah. This is the one I saw the trailer just online before we came here. Yeah. This yeah. is the damn funniest idea I've seen. Did oh, it, thank you. How long has it been out for? Uh, we finished the... So basically what you do is you do the, the film and then you enter it in festivals and then we basically travel the country with the film. I mean, we went to 12 different festivals, um, and then after that, then you get your, we, you know, you get distribution offers along the way, and then you sit down after, and you have to kind of work out the legality of it. Um, so now that's kind of what we're in the phase of. And so someone offered to distribute this because you made this independently, and then right. you sell it to, right. to a distributor, and then it goes all across the country and all yeah, these movies. It, it goes. It looks like it. I mean, I haven't seen the movie, but the idea is such a Hollywood commercial idea. Right. It's a story of. A guy whose mom remarries, a guy, and the guy and the guy she remarries is only four months older than him. Right, right. And that, isn't that a great idea? So basically, <laughs> brilliant. The, it's the, like a buddy. Yeah. But I can't not yeah. believe that someone hasn't thought about it already. But I then. know. And then basically, some of the some of the festivals we were at, people would approach us. Like we had some guy from from uh, Fox came up and he was like. You know, I think it's a great concept. I think we should basically bury this movie and uh, <laughs> do it right. We'll pay you guys to rewrite it and do it on like a studio scale. Mm. Um, okay, I'm sure. What you What does that sound like to you? I mean, I mean, I was free. I mean, I was, I was, I was pretty drunk at that point because it was like the big rap party of the fest of the film fest, and this guy came up to me. Uh, but it was like we were freaking out, and then we were like, you know, it, it is Hollywood, so you don't really know. Um, but but one of the guys he wanted to bring it to was this big uh, uh, producer at Fox that I had worked for. So when he's like, I want to bring it to this guy, and I was like, Oh, this guy actually checks out. Um, but basically, it's it's you what, know it's Hollywood. What became of that idea? Basically, he pitched it to the guy I worked for, um, and I had actually pitched the movie to the guy, this producer, like two years before we we we, uh, we made it. And he was like, Yeah, sure. Send if you do shoot it, send it to me, and I'll look at it. And we shot it. And I sent it to him, and he didn't he didn't do anything. And then this guy went to it to uh, this guy John and, and John was like eh, I don't know, I don't know. so wh- how, how hard is it or easy is it to regulate or keep your idea safe when, in these sort of circles when, when, it's, when yeah. it's just a concept or even when you have the movie but you're talking about you know burying this one and making this one and it seems like you know danger yeah it's dangerous because basically it's like if they can I mean they can, they can steal your idea if they want it right. um, and they you know we couldn't do anything about it but uh, I have a sister who's a, a entertainment lawyer who is, you know, it's a good person to have in your corner when she she's like, you better get, you know, a, a, an NDA and before you send him anything and all this stuff. What do you say like, you went and pitched this? You pitched this idea to somebody in Hollywood. Yeah, he was down as here a concept from, for a movie. Yeah, but who could listen to this one sentence pitch even and not buy that? Yeah, I mean, it's mean, obviously it, a great Hollywood he, concept, isn't right? It? I think what it is 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 uh, you know when you're working because that's kind of what why I work in, in film as an assistant so I can kind of bypass these barriers and have meetings with people that would potentially help us out like Will Ferrell right right did he right. see this movie uh, he's seen other stuff we did but, but why has he seen this his other his guys have all seen it and they love it has Jimmy Miller seen it. No, Jimmy's huge. I don't. Yeah, but yeah. you've got his phone number off the billboard. You call him up and say, "Dude." Well, that was years <laughs> ago. <What's> my movie, <laughs> right? But but you have all these contacts. I mean, is this movie no good or something? No, the movie's great. So why wouldn't someone have picked it up instantly? It sounds so. Gr- I mean, the the trailer is looks great. Right. And the funny thing about the trailer, you guys too, by the way, is you can see it at a website called IHateMyStepdad.com. <laughs> I can't believe that was available. Yeah, that was available. <laughs> there's a lot of great... <laughs> there's, there's so many great websites that are, are available that people just don't know. Well, this is know. an awesome... I, anyway, this film looks really great. and I would be shocked if this doesn't become a super huge movie yeah, somehow thank you. or other. Thank you. I'm looking for... So we can go to <laughs> IHateMyStepdad.com and take a look at it. I'm take that one and out. let me tell you a little bit. We're going to come back to uh, we're going to back to Rose. Should I go on with Rosemary or should I make uh, Sam play something for us? Make Sam play something. Uh, we okay, can Sam. some music. I'll tell you a little bit about Sam McCabe, who's here from the band from Foxes. Hello, Sam, officially. How you doing? Haven't seen you for how long has it been since you were on the show last uh, time? My drummer Jared and I came by like a week after we put an album out in September of 2013. So it's been like a year and a half. It's been a, a year and a half. It's been a little while. 
Yeah. It has been a little while. The band, yeah. his name is Bantam Foxes, which I, I did not screw up. For yeah. Right. Last right. time I said Phantom Boxes constantly. <laughs> it's, it's all good, <laughs> man. So I'm freaking out that I'm going to say I can't tell you so how many gigs we've showed up to in the last six months where it's like either spelled wrong on the board. Batman or it's Foxes. Like we get that a lot. <laughs> Batman we get, Foxes. We get that a lot. We get it just like totally butchered and like mm-hmm. spelled wrong. We get, you know, all sorts of crap and it's, Whatever. We Batman Fox is pretty that's, good. It's, yeah, yeah, exactly. We I think that's that good. good it says that you, it's, it, this is a great bio. It says here, over the I past three years, Bantam Foxes has survived in a town whose music scene is filled with tourists who don't want to hear original rock. And <laughs> therefore, the band is spending an inordinate amount of time on the road playing to college football fans who would prefer to hear cover bands. This is a, <laughs> this is a hellish yeah, story. Yeah, Bantam <laughs> Fox's latest record <laughs> is called Give Us a Raise. The whole record clocks in at just under 15 minutes. That's more like it. Yeah. Who's got time to listen to a whole album? Yeah, right, fucking Andrew? A. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> it says here it's a fuzz-soaked story of a band fed up with the grind of being a rock and roll band. It's a story of a band who want, of a band wanting nothing else but to play rock and roll to whomever will listen. It's the story of a band playing over 150 shows in only two years, but mostly... It's the story of a band that deserves a damn raise. Yeah, that's... Yeah. So are you really pissed off and sick of well, the whole fucking thing? Well, and you want to throw it in and be a school teacher? Or? <laughs> Actually, it's funny. That's, that's what I do on the side. Um, but no, You're a school well, teacher? No, I, I work at... Um, I do aftercare and uh, over at Lusher. And so I, wor- I work with first through fifth graders you work during with the week. D- Darcy Malone? I do, actually. She's she another told me musician. to tell you why. Oh, I am sk- I'm skipping work to be here right now. Oh, so. good man. Thank <laughs> you. Right. Thanks to the kids. Yeah, right. Exactly. So what do you do with these little tykes after school? Uh, I teach guitar a couple of days a week, and I teach PE a couple of days a week. And PE, supervise. that's funny. Oh, yeah. Do you great. make the kids shave? No. No, God, no. no. <laughs> that would be if, great. I mean, if, should, they, really. if they've got anything to shave. Uh, no, How they're old are they? Uh, first through fifth grade. So, they're yeah, mm. they're, they're small. They are brutal sometimes, but they are, they're fun for the most part. So, so how so. many kids do you have to look after? Um, I teach gu- The guitar class I teach on Mondays has eight first eight no eight third through fifth graders in it but um when we're out cla- outside after the classes there's like i don't know like 250 kids out there i don't know there's a there's so everyone's got a guitar in this class oh yeah and that's they real have fun. like you teach them to play chords and then yeah yeah what sort of songs do they start um i taught them how to play hotel yorba by the white stripes about a month ago which was pretty all right <laughs> it was okay awesome. yeah it was fun Sounds like a but, uh, school of rock. Yeah, that's, yeah, what, I'm, that's yeah. what I'm trying to go Talking for. Talking of Jack Black. <laughs> you know Jack Black, Mac? I don't know Jack Black, no. Yeah. He'd be good. That's but yeah. 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 Actually, one of, one of the kids, so on Mondays, yeah. I always ask them if any of them did anything particularly rock and roll that, that, that weekend beforehand. And one of the kids has every single Monday come in and said, I watched School of Rock last night. Like, oh. every, says that every single month. He's been saying this since, like, August. And so, like, I don't oh know. Have you met his parents? Or does yeah, no, his, his parents are great, man. I just, I've never I the bothered to ask. Yeah, I mean, week. they're, like, nine. I, that movie came out when I was, like, I don't know. I was probably... How long ago was it? Maybe it was, like, ten years old now. Is it? I don't know. Really? Well, yeah. It was ten years Something old, like that. yeah. Oh, yeah, I mean, I would... Uh, yeah, I don't know. I had, My little sister watched that movie when that came out, and she was probably, like, seven when that came out. So, I don't know. It was just... When you say came cool. out, what are you talking about? Oh, well, when that movie was released. Like, when the movie yeah, came out, like not when you came yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. I no, thought no, you were no, trying to sell us your no, gay. No, no, no. You're not. Oh, was, no. <laughs> hey, so um, <laughs> what is Jack Black doing now, Mac? Uh, what he, happened to him? No, he did a movie here called The D-Train. Uh, yeah. I think D-Train. It, it premiered at Sundance. did really well. Is it good? Uh, so I think he's supposed to. This is might it be, uh, something about Tenacious D or something? No, no. He, it's like him. He's like a nerd in high school, or he was, and they're having a class reunion, and yeah. Another brilliant uh, original idea. I right? know, and apparently this one's not bad. It sounds r- really it sounds stupid. Cool. Great. <laughs> it's a high school reunion movie where some nerdy guy comes back and he's and turned out to be fabulous, or he's no, more no, of a nerd he, than ever. He's, he's more of a nerd, and I think he has to track down James Marsden, who was like the cool guy, and bring him back. I don't know. I didn't. I didn't work on that. But he also he did Goosebumps here too. So. I don't know anything about a, that at all. Is that was a, it? Is that ch- out? Was it children's book? Goosebumps. Oh yeah. Wait, did yeah. they yeah. make they made a Goosebumps movie? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Is that out yet? Or not no, out? not yet. So you, you get to see all the. Well, not only you get to work on these things, but you get to see them before they come out. Uh, certain movies, like like Get Hard, uh, it's in theater. It's coming out next week. We I think they're doing like a preview screening for the crew, which some movies do, some don't. Um, so, Sam, I'm going to make you play something right yeah. now. But for, for when we come back, I'm going to grab my guitar Mac, real quick. Okay, get the guitar. I want to ask Mac when we come back and hear Sam play something. Um, how you get one gig to another how you move on yeah so let's, I want to hear how do these guys refer you or whatever then, well let's see okay. okay can you remember that question because I'm I, on yeah, a yeah. <laughs> okay Sam what are you uh, 
Can I carry anything? No, we're good. We're good. I guess. Okay. Sit up here. All right. Yeah. Matt can hold it forward for you if you like. I got it. Oh, yeah, I understand. Yeah, 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 right. So, what do you want to play? Um, I'm going to play a song that. Um, uh, this is a song called Without Me that we actually we premiered. The, it's going to be on the record, um, which is coming out next next month, April 14th, I believe. We actually just put a video up for this, um, and we covered my entire apartment in aluminum foil, like 1,500 square feet of aluminum foil, and it was really dumb. <laughs> and, uh, you, and you can watch well start growing weed in there. Yeah, once you right, exactly. Uh, and you can watch that on the internet if you want to, <laughs> but uh, you probably don't. So uh, yeah, this is a song called Without Me that I wrote uh, with my brother. So. Phantom Foxes. Thank you. Okay, can you guys hear me? Oh, yeah. Okay, oh, yeah. I can't hear myself cool. for some reason, but whatever. So how do you like that song, Sam? Uh, that song's all right. Yeah? Um, yeah, I, uh, that was probably the first one we wrote for this new batch of stuff that's coming out this year. Um, and so I wrote that about probably about a year ago now. And, uh, yeah, I was, I don't know, I was hanging out. Um, my girlfriend and now fiance was out of town and I was like oh, feeling really lonely. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Okay, um, that's serious. Thanks. Mm, that's all right. Um, I, was, <laughs> <laughs> I was feeling really lonely and was just like, all right, well, screw this. So, yeah, I don't know. I was Write a song it. about her not being able to get away from you. But no, she didn't get away. Yeah, that's yeah right. exactly. Well, that's all right. Yeah, sure. <laughs> it's terrifying. Well, when's a big um, day? And are we oh, in, it's going to be a little while. We just... <laughs> um, it's going to be in September of next year. So September of 2016. Yes. What's yeah. the uh, why are you waiting so long? Um well, it got kind of some like tests it. to come back. Yeah, just kind of just kind of felt like it. I don't know. I right. didn't I don't want to really want to rush anything and right. um, you know, it was Could we invite could we invite uh, Will Ferrell and Yeah. I would love to. Some of the guys. I would, I would love if Will Ferrell would show to How about some how about yeah. some body art on the brides? Yeah, man. Absolutely. <laughs> there we go. All right. That's right there. All right. Oh, that'd be yeah. great. Hell yeah. That was a great idea. Okay, I'm going to talk about body art in a minute, but first of all, Mac, tell us, how do you get referred from one of these superstars to the other? Uh, I just 
do it myself pretty much or like how you, you know how well like, I'm, i have very good uh relationships and friendships with uh with people in the you know the basically when a movie comes in town they they hire the office the production office and uh I just from relationships from before and doing I, I guess a good job with with certain actors uh and they just call me up and they say hey we have somebody else here will you come will you do you want it or you want to come interview for it and i, I usually it's word of mouth pretty much so you have to interview with these people or i usually do their assistants or um, sometimes well, you're the, there. Uh, yeah, but but the way it kind of works is like some some bi- when an actor gets big enough, like Kevin Costner, he his former assistant, they'll have assistants with them for ten years, and then they'll make that assistant their producer. And any movie they do, that assistant is now a producer and a producer. So they basically have a kind of a person on the end, um, which is some, which is one avenue. Yeah. Can but, you get to be a producer for Will Ferrell now or something? Uh, no, no, no. Well, can you be? Are you going to be someone's? You don't want to be an assistant. You don't be in a no, career. No, yeah, assistant. yeah. I, I, we're doing a lot of we're we're doing stuff on the other side of the of the, the camera. I guess we're doing a lot of writing and and uh, and basically on the the last Will movie, they're letting you know kind of they were kind of letting me write jokes and and putting them in the movie and uh, you get to actually write really? stuff that goes That's in. That's fun. Mo- I didn't get any. I got two jokes in, um, and they weren't even that good. The jokes, I, I but I would come in with you know about twenty jokes every day or 30 just based off like the script that they're shooting that day and if they get cleared by like the wills guys and then we'd bring it to the director and they'd be like oh this is a pg-13 movie we can't we can't say that and like and then every day they'd be like you, you got to learn how to like pull the reins back and not push the envelope but i think with comedy you want to push the envelope you know so you you're know. reading the screenplay they're going to shoot that day like they're going day by day they do a few pages a day yeah and you're coming sh- in the morning you go you know what some of this writing sucks i could fix this well i would never say that I no, but, I could, <laughs> but you sometimes could I though. think that could yeah. you be i, I could, this, you yeah. could though <laughs> i could yeah I'd this could be a bit there long. could be a bit of line here and yeah i've well, spent uh, years developing these screenplays these people yeah, like so, like the scream. The and you're coming in the, the day of saying, ass, "Hey, you yeah. know what? Yeah, this yeah, guy's like on page two. This is fucked up." Well, what I say is like, "Oh, you know, we're in our, me, you know, me and my friend, we're in our twenties, and you guys are in your forties. Oh, they must like Here's to hear what's that currently too, funny. Yeah, right. yeah, here's what's <laughs> currently <laughs> funny. Oh my god! And then they. I'm kick surprised me out. you keep getting in. Yeah, yeah I know. That's really oh, cool though, because you know you call it an assistant role, but really, you know, you're 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 within the the spectrum of things that you're doing you know? right and, and it's it's job to job like those jobs with the, with comedy it's it's great it's that's kind of what i want to do but i'll get certain actors that are are monsters and they just ruin you you know it's ruin you yeah what do you mean by they're just evil people you know and, and are they just horrible to work for yeah they're just like mean and selfish yeah and, and then you're the first person they turn to when they want to lash out okay so who are we talking about um, <laughs> uh, Do you really want to work for that asshole again? No, it's okay, so uh, who is it? Jim Caviezel. Jim Caviezel. People I don't, don't really even know who that is. Oh, no, that's the guy that was Jesus, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just yeah. Yeah, there you go. Jesus is an asshole. Uh, <laughs> nice. Let's write it. Yeah, yes. yeah Jesus. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Well, that could be a good song for us to work on. Yeah. Jesus is an asshole. Yeah. Jesus. Okay. Is that could be a good name for a, a movie. This could be everything. We could yeah. have a movie, a song. I and mean, you really concert. eliminate a certain I'm sure group it'd of be people. A hit. But, wouldn't yeah. it? <laughs> well, you could paint it up, too. Jesus <laughs> is an asshole. And who else is an asshole? Anybody else? Um, I mean, he takes a cake, but certain people are, have their moments that are pretty bad. Well, what's the definition of being like a horrible person every day? Uh, just basically screaming in my face every day and mm. uh, wow. throwing shit and mm. nice. getting naked and stu- <laughs> getting stuff. Getting naked. Like that. Wow. And, uh, you know, Whoa. You put well, up a lot of stuff. Rosemary, why would you think getting naked is weird? It's <laughs> yeah, right. like your job. Well, yeah, yeah. If, if it's like the intention, but all of a sudden someone just naked in front of me. Uh, like, he was looking to get body like painted, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Has anybody yelled at you while you were painting their naked body? No. Yeah. It has a very um, relaxing effect. Usually they, they yeah, you know, I would think. kind mm. of fall asleep in a way mm-hmm. how long does it take to have your body painted and it's very depends on elaborate. what you want and this one was uh six hours Jesus Jesus and the show we're uh, we're there all day they're painting six hours we, that's it's impressive. like we get there at noon we're done at midnight well Long. that's not six hours that's more than six i'm sure no that's well, all the rest well, of the production that's the whole thing show. The show. okay yeah well, <laughs> <laughs> hey let me tell you something about some of the folks who made the show possible today thank you very much to petite pet care if you're going out of town or you have a crazy schedule 
folks at Petite Pet Care will take care of your pet in his or her own home. For love and care when you're not there, go to PetitePetCare.com. Also thanks to Basics Swim and Gym, a full range of fashion swimsuits, workout and yoga clothes with style. The all-new Basics Swim and Gym is on Magazine Street near Jefferson Avenue. Thanks also to Hangover Destroyer, the only all... I can almost do this without laughing, it's hot. <laughs> By Hangover Destroyer, the only all-natural product medically proven to prevent a hangover. Go to Hangover Destroyer's website. It's called hdestroyer.com. Have another drink, Matt. Come on. Write happy hour on the coupon code to get 30% off of Hangover Destroyer and seize the dawn. And finally, buy our friends at unlistednola.com, the revolutionary new way to buy a house in New Orleans. If you know what you're looking for, you can find your perfect match before it comes on the market. It's the match.com of real estate. It's called unlistednola.com. Music provided by Andrew Duhon, Grammy nominated. Songwriter, the record, singer. the record was Grammy nominated. Not the me. record was nominated for a Grammy. Hell yeah! And not you, even though you actually played on every song, wrote every song. I didn't engineer it. Sang it was the best engineered. Song. It's just not sorry. nominated for best. Sorry, engine. Grant. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, it still is an awesome record. It's called The Thanks, Moorings. Dude. Are you working on another one? Every day. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> when is it coming out? Though? <laughs> Who knows? You know, I'm just writing tunes. Right. I'd like to think that having 20 soons together and then you whittle it down to 10 or 12 or something like that and uh, I'd say maybe I have 12 now so maybe 8 more you want to try one out? Kay. let's do it which one? what number? I don't know let me play you since we just got back from heading west we went to the south by southwest thing so tell, tell us about that before well we, we did it all wrong you know because oh we did no. we had our little official showcase but we uh, some of the uh, the drummer and the bassist could only stay for certain days so we asked them to push it into the week on a Wednesday which you know a Friday or Saturday would be much better and they gave us a Friday at first but then they, then we said no can we do a Wednesday which ended up being a much worse hmm. slot but uh you know we went we saw we most certainly did not conquer so you've <laughs> been there before yeah last year was great in fact which was kind of more of a bummer because last year I didn't have my hopes up but it was great and then this time I was like oh it'll be great again and it wasn't great again uh, so so mm. you, they offered you a great slot, and you said, we don't want it. We want a shitty slot. Yeah, yeah. it's just so I could play with the trio. Because yeah. the trio's been where it was. Been so why can't lately. these guys work on the weekend? They had other gigs. They can, yeah, but they have other artistic callings. You have yeah. to let everybody, you know. Everyone's good. Well, this is why you need a manager. No, I have a manager. Oh, you have a manager? I do. Oh, so you found somebody new. We can talk about this later, Grant. We hang out all the time. We have guests. Oh, okay, <laughs> all right. Are you interested in Andrew's management issues? No. no. Okay, we'll okay well, what song. about a song? So this is a tune uh, that I wrote after we were hanging out in Lafayette, and we went to this coffee shop, and there was a black and white picture on the wall, and the bassist leans over to the picture and looks at it and decides it's the most beautiful woman that he's ever seen in his life. We both get a little closer, and there's a obituary next to the picture and all this information of this woman. But truly, like this beautiful woman, we got to thinking how you go about courting a woman from the 1940s, and it's impossible. But, you know, just one of those um, nostalgia moments. Tune went like this. I was taken back by a photograph, never seen such a face. She was a waitress from the days of black and white Taken here though so many years ago at this cafe That I'm sure these days she wouldn't recognize Oh Cecilia Champagne I've come along much too late To know the days of your maiden name had our times been the same I'd visit you every day Oh, Cecilia, I'd steal you away But I've come along much too late Nothing gold stays Time passes on Even black and white fades And we move along But still in my mind Lips are red wine Strawberry blind Cherry cokes for the boys 
in your uniform Oh, Cecilia Champagne I've come along much too late To know the days of your maiden name But had our times been the same I'd visit you every day Oh, Cecilia, I'd steal you away But I've come along much too late If only I'd been a man When you were a woman Oh, Cecilia Champagne I've come along much too late To know the days of your maiden name But had our times been the same I'd visit you every day Oh, Cecilia, I steer you away It seems I've come along much too late Thanks, oh. y'all. That's a keeper. I would say. I, wouldn't I, you? I would say that's. I'd a put good that one. on the record, Rosemary. You think so? I think so. Yeah. I'll, I'll big that one down then. What a nice. Answer. I is love the story. Thanks. It's cool, isn't it? Mm-hmm. It's sort of uh, wistful and romantic. It's nice. We play, uh, played it in Lafayette actually this first time, and I told them, you know, I usually tell the story and say it was just this town that we were in, and there was just this coffee shop, but I was like, it's right across the street. It's that <laughs> spot right there. And they're like, all oh, right, the board, and yeah. And uh, does it have her name on there, or did you make that up? No, yeah, it's the names on there. But hey, they really called man. me out because it's not champagne, it's champagne. You know? ah, <laughs> but you can't rhyme with champagne, champagne, champagne you know. Well, Which I knew, but I knew this. It's the same it's as New Orleans. So you can't put license. New Orleans in the song either. Right. You have to New say Orleans, New Orleans. New Orleans, yeah. Even yeah. if you're... New Orleans. Same shit. Yeah. Yeah. Can you get New Orleans into a song, though, really? As you uh, what does it rhyme with? Have, <laughs> it's hard to... It doesn't seem to work. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. it's kind of a... Weird rhyme, weird word to find rhymes to. Well, that's mm. a good point. What rhymes with New Orleans? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, nothing. Well, you put me on the spot, so I can't think of anything. Darling. <laughs> but that's a bit inside. So was that a waltz, Andrew? Uh, yeah, I guess it is, yeah. That's really nice, isn't it? Hmm. You don't hear people writing waltzes anymore much. No one buys waltzes no more. Who wrote that? that r- waltzes aren't selling anymore. They're That's not. a song. Can't it's like Elvis Costello sort of or something. Was it? You can sort of see that when you play that song and then talk about oh, cool. mm-hmm. sort of people waltzing around that dance floor. Mm. Mm-hmm. Well, like Matt can make the video. You should. Yeah. Rosemary yeah, could paint people up and you could. Yeah, there you go. <coughs> so that sounds great. Rosemary, that's <laughs> what I was wondering about. Um, Mm-hmm. This this is like fine art that you do on people. I mean, it's mm-hmm. absolutely yeah. detailed and beautiful and perfect. Mm-hmm. Why did you want to do it on human beings that then have to wash it off eventually? Mm. Why don't you want to do this on a I just canvas? think that's so boring to paint two-dimensional. I don't know what it is. Cause I, I wasn't, I've always been an artist. But I wasn't really a painter or drawer until I discovered that you could do it on the skin. And then I was suddenly interested. So I don't know. It's something about working with the human spirit and something about it being temporary, you know, like the sand mandalas. There's something very mystical about putting all this energy and beauty into something and then it just being gone. What is attractive about that to you? I, you know, I've been trying to figure it out for years and I really don't know. We could get to the bottom of it right now if you like. <laughs> <laughs> it shouldn't take us long. Between all of us. Yeah. Well, well, maybe, have maybe have you got any uh, thoughts about it? I maybe th- sorry, you go. No, you go. You go. <laughs> I was just going to ask, what, what, like, um, what was the first time that you did that, that you discovered that you wanted to paint bodies like wh- how did that happen well i started actually by making sculptures and then doing things on mannequins uh. and i was like this is so fun why don't i just put these on actual humans i want to wear this stuff so i started making costumes and i thought what well, need a whole nother like dimension to add to it like make them characters and their skin colors change Dang. so then body paint I thought along. for sure I was going to be while well, my roommate in college would get drunk and pass out. <laughs> and I had to watch <laughs> Sharpies. <you know. laughs> no, I was never that. Where, where do you come from, Rosemary? I am from Atlanta originally. Atlanta, yep. Georgia. Yep. Yeah, okay. But I've lived a lot of different places. 
So. Where did you start body painting? At home in Atlanta or on the no, road No, actually, else? I think I started, well, I started face painting on the road, but I think body painting happened when I was, you know, in New Orleans when it started and people were calling, I want to go down Bourbon Street, you know, I want to be naked, body painted. Right. Who told you that? I don't know, it just... I mean, what kind of person? How do you meet someone who says that? Are they drunk? That's a good question. Yeah. Is that kind of like... They the found me on room? the internet and there wasn't any, anyone else doing it, so yeah. I was the one. <laughs> people find you on the internet and they call up and say, can you paint my body so I can walk drunk down Bourbon Street <laughs> on a random Wednesday that's night? How, that's what they do Speaking occasionally. They, have, they wow. haven't gotten one of those calls in quite a while. Mostly I'm doing like, um, Jim you know, fashion like shows yeah. or, you know... <laughs> <laughs> oh, fashion shows. That's what yeah. you mostly make a living doing. Well, no, just like people who are calling because they want they want to be like it's their birthday party, uh, or okay. it is a fashion show, or they want pictures for their boyfriend, or it's a promo event for some so liquor go- company. Okay, so guys don't do this much. No, they do occasionally, is but I prefer. Is it because of the genital problem? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's what? just kind of waggly out there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what goes <laughs> on? Yeah, That's a, a good question. Well, they're not completely painted. I mean, I don't paint that personally, but there are artists. You don't do any genital painting. There I do are, not. There are people who will. There are those that will, and okay. I will send you to them if that's what you really want. Okay. Okay, hell yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> what do you do when that question <laughs> comes up? Someone calls you and says, hey, I got your name off the internet. I say, yeah, I don't do that. You paint my penis for me. You say, <laughs> I no, say, no. Straight out, no. I don't, I don't do that, and if you really want an eagle painted there with wings, you need to go to so-and-so. Like an is elephant? that a request that you've actually got? Or elephant. Like an eagle? On yeah. On the yeah. Uh-huh. Wow. wow. Really? Yeah. I get all kind of requests. That's, wow. That's impressive. Or like an yeah. elf. You get like elf. When they, yeah, so elf like when good. it moves, it'll yeah, like dance. It's kind of like, like a good tattoo. You I know, think like that's the what they're <laughs> trying to get at, <laughs> <laughs> but no, that's not oh for me. I'm not going to be doing that. And Well, I'll pay you $100 extra. <laughs> well, that's <laughs> not <laughs> enough. I'm yeah. sorry. Is my dignity worth a hundred dollars. <laughs> so what happens yeah. when a guy does want to get body painted? You have to just wear some sort of speedo or something. It happens. Uh, yeah, we well, put them in a speedo. You do. Yeah. Right. Are these girls wearing underwear or too? Jo- or? Yeah, they are. We okay. we're very and they're even wearing pasties. Okay. So we're painting over that mm. because for Facebook and internet stuff, if, yes. if there's ever right. a butt crack or a nipple showing, then it gets banned. Yeah. Right. Uh, I was even <coughs> concerned about putting this on our Facebook page because we've had stuff taken. We've really? come knocked off Facebook twice. I don't want to go on about but that But Sports again, Illustrated but always does that. Yeah, they, oh, yeah. They, were, they were pretty much the... Joanne Gare is the artist. She's been doing it for probably 20 years, I think. And she's the one who... One of the ones that made it so popular. Mm. She's a pioneer. Mm-hmm. Are you famous in the body painting world? Not necessarily, no. So is there like a world famous body painter? Like oh yeah, there's who, lots of them. Well, who are the celebrity body painters? Well, one of them is in this show, and his name is oh. Craig Tracy. Craig Tracy. And okay. He has the first um, body paint gallery in the world. It's on Royal Street. Oh, that guy, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. here. Yeah. Right, there's all kinds of videos playing all day in that place. Yeah. Yeah. Of people who, it's fascinating. Mm-hmm. So wh- how many of these people would you say have that sort of realistic element as Craig, Greg? Craig. Craig seems to have, Tracy. and then how many uh, people do kind of these symbolic sort of like symbols and things? Which is yeah, it's th- there seems to be a couple of few different kinds of body artists, you know. Mm. Um, I would say half and half. Yeah. So you know? just to be clear, Craig Tracy does he paints like leopards and tigers yeah, and yeah. things on yeah. paper. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. But he does some of that too, where it's just design work and for tomorrow's thing, he's doing something like stained glass or something. Mm. So the, you have to have a pretty good body to do this, right? You wouldn't want to be well, overweight or... Well, there, there's a whole lot of different, you know, thoughts around that. It depends. I mean, we'll paint all kind of bodies. Right. But a lot of times, like, the performers are well fit, obviously, because they right. have, have to, to do all kind of things. <laughs> Hanging upside down and jumping around. and So this is what's going on on Friday night, yeah. March 20th, 2015, and every year mm-hmm. in March. Mm-hmm. There's actual activities, like, what are they doing exactly? Yeah, well... When you we say performing, what? Well, like, it's like a circus. So you have, like, one after the other on stage. But what are they actually doing? Are they clowns or trapeze no. artists? No. They're, yeah, elef- we have aerialists. <laughs> we have belly anymore. dance, and um, we have a ballet dancer. Um, okay. We have burlesque, and we have a magician even who entertains the audience beforehand. 
Yeah. He's body painted. Is he painted? Yeah, just the upper half because you got to have your pants for oh, magic. For the, uh, for the yeah. Do you? Because you got hide stuff oh, in yeah. there. So I you guess. Have, to have your pants for magic. <laughs> 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 well, it depends on the magic tricks, I guess. All right. Okay. It's easier for him with, with pants. So he wants to keep his pants on. Yeah. All right. He's and the only one. That's weak. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So do you do this? <laughs> do you do this? <laughs> Take your pants off, man. <laughs> really? Do you do this all day, every day, then, Rosemary? I do it a lot. I'm I'm a festival artist too. So when so I'm travel. in festival mode, I'm doing it for eight or ten hours straight every well, day. So you travel around festivals mm -hmm. and set up, and then people come to you and you sit there for eight hours painting them. Yeah. Cool. So I have like festivals I've done for like ten years, and the families and the kids all know me, and they come to me and. Like I have like my little posse of the the kids that love to hang out, <laughs> and oh, they you've just got come like by. Groupies. Yeah, <laughs> I guess so. Ah, that's interesting. Yeah. Oh, wait, what they're like family though. What kind of festivals are they? Um, I do mostly like bluegrass festivals. I do um, a lot of. They're all usually camping festivals, and people have brought their family there for the weekend, like a you know um, vacation kind of. Cool. Yeah. And everyone's camping, so you can't really go anywhere. So if the whole festival gets like turns into a mudslide, they're still there. That's so that's cool. good. Other than it's not like a street festival. If Where it rains, you nobody do you will stay come. in a tent or yeah. something. Or you stay in yeah. a hotel. You stay in a no, tent. No, we all sleep. We're camping the whole time. So you like there. We like live wow. there. So cool. this is a family of these. I mean, like a yeah. You know, people that move around and yeah. There's like, like so county, many different kind of festivals. Type. Do you so do I, the I like Renaissance the festivals? No, because mm. those are a really long stretch, and I can't yeah. handle that for eight weeks at a time in no, one place. Really? I just move from one to another. I'm too much of a gypsy. Do you live in New Orleans most of the time when you're not traveling? I do not, actually. I Where do you live? I live in Atlanta. Okay. Well, I live north of Atlanta. I have a, a off-grid home that I built in off -grid north home. Georgia. Mm -hmm. uh, off-grid cool. home? Yeah. What does that mean? No electricity or anything? It's all solar. And we get all oh of wow. our rain from the sky. Wow. Killer. Who do you live with when you say out? My um, fiancé. He when, built it. When are you getting married? We keep saying once the house is done. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know. What about, <laughs> what about Sam and you guys having a double wedding yeah. at your house off the grid? Free that band. Sounds, that sounds Body well, paint, music. Are you okay with peacocks Body. and goats yeah. as your bridesmaids and groomsmen? Peacocks are... <laughs> Probably the coolest <laughs> birds ever, so I'll, I can get down. <laughs> Go for it. Hell yeah. This could then work it's a out. possibility, yeah. So how did we find you for this? How did our fabulous producer, Graham DePonte, book you if you don't live here? How did she know about you? I know. Well, I found you guys. Oh, you found us. Uh -huh. oh, I'm on really? social media a lot. Oh, okay. And I have a huge network of friends and family here because I lived in New Orleans for eight years before Katrina. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. What were I you doing here then? I worked in Jackson Square. I was the first body artist in Jackson Square, the first henna artist. Henna. I had to battle. And now we're on a whole new thing. Yeah. Henna. <sighs> That's a whole other yeah. art form. Henna is beautiful, too. That's yeah. an Indian. Mm -hmm. or the, like, it looks like you've got a sort of a tablecloth or something like that. Like a doily. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like doily. Or yeah. lace. Nailed it. Lace. Yeah. Lace. Yeah. That's yeah. better. That's, okay. That's nicer. That's, yeah. I was trying to think of the right term. It's not I, like you know. checkered patterns. or. No, it's very intricate, too. Ha is it done by hand? Mm -hmm. It's not traced through it like a doily. No, it's done by hand. I mean, what I do and professionals, yep. but... Wow. It's like one little tiny line coming out of this utensil. It's not like a brush where you can cover the body really fast. So it takes many more hours. It's like work. a pencil or something? It's a, um, it's a silk painting bottle. So it's a hollow tip that you squeeze the henna through. Wow. Okay. I was wondering how that works. Yeah. yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. How did you learn how to do that? I'm self-taught. Cool. There wasn't anyone doing isn't it there when a I lot, But isn't there a thousands of years tradition in India? Of in India. But you didn't go to <laughs> India? You, have you been No, to? nobody was doing it here yet, or right. uh, except for their families and at their weddings, you know, but there wasn't any. Well, what would you do, get it off YouTube or something? No, actually, I was I was saw someone doing it at s outside of a shop <laughs> like 20 years ago in New Orleans, right. and I would, fell in love with it, and they gave me a free kit because I was really, really dirt poor, and I just started doing it. Wow, cool. how yeah. cool. Outside yeah. cruise or something? No, it was like some place that used to be in the French Quarter called like Hemptopia or do you remember some place like that? It was like a hemp store. I mean, that just, no, that, just that sounds like somewhere <laughs> that you can get a henna tattoo. <laughs> that's, what I'm yeah. like, I'm like, that's why I'm nodding along because it's like, oh yeah, the hemp sure. store, sure. You know, down the street. Yeah. <laughs> there was that was like 20 years ago. There was some right? sort of pot shop on South Peter Street. 
Is there? Remember that thing? What's it? South Peter's Pot Shop. 401, 411 South Peter's. It might have been it. I can't it was, the I think, down there in South Peter's. I remember that doing those commercials for some radio station, the 411 oh, South Peter's. Oh, it wasn't Peters. that big. I think it was the Hemporium. Hemporium. Ah, that's, yeah. that's pretty good. Uh, that's a nice little... Uh, yeah. That's good. I like that. I came up with a good name. Yeah, so, that yeah, is cool. Yeah. How interesting this whole thing has been. Okay, so, Mac, what are you working on these days? What's next? Uh, yeah, I, um, I had a... Uh, uh, actually, I'm supposed to hear back today or tomorrow. I did a little writing sample for Funny or Die. Uh, That's the Will Ferrell people. Yeah, well, how yeah. How could Will Ferrell not give you a gig? I know, right? Well, I, you know, you still have to produce. You still have to show your... It's still got to be good. Funny, yeah. yeah. So I submitted some samples of some writing, and uh, if I get the job, then I, g- I guess I get a good L.A., but... All right. uh, so what is the job? Just writing for their website, like sketches or, or uh, they do kind of like uh, the onion kind of fake, yeah. not the onion, they, they say they don't want to be the onion, but like fake, uh, making fun of, you know, modern. I think it's called stuff. satire. Yeah, but yeah, like written uh, news story. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's yeah, what they call it. that thing satire, whatever right. the hell that is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so. And then we, we have a short that we're, we're doing uh, festivals called I Love Art, uh, and then distribution on Follow Like Sun. So. I Love Art. Yeah. What's that? Is that funny? Yeah, it's my friend Gray. Gray Ward is a, he, he is a guy who goes to a, an art gallery and falls in love with a painting, uh, literally. Hey, and it's like Cecilia Champagne. Yeah, tries to have sex sort with of. it and stuff. Tries to have sex with a painting? Yeah, it's something like okay, that. No, well, okay, now <laughs> you're onto something. <laughs> Yeah. Does he succeed in having sex? No. no. Well, I kind of leave that kind of vague. Uh, really? Yeah. We'll have to watch. Yeah. yeah. The sequel, uh, he'll, be, he'll be in there. The sequel wow. could be I Love <laughs> Art too. You could do I Fuck Art. I Fuck Art, yeah. Yeah. It's just an idea, you know? Yeah, If okay. you use it, though, what do I get if you, you use You get that? 10%. Um, really? 10%? Yeah. That's pretty good, right? Yeah, I think really that's a, another great movie title. That's going to fly, for sure. I Fuck, I fuck Art. art. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think it's it sounds huge. like a T-shirt you get in Japan where they didn't exactly yeah. know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey Sam, we're gonna have to get out of here in a minute. Can we make you play another song before uh, we leave? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, we can okay. do that. Um, what do you got? Sure. All right. So the way we're doing releasing music and stuff um, starting in April is every six months we're gonna put out a four-song EP. So give us a raise is the first half of um, something we recorded last summer at the music shed with our best friend and engineer Ben Lorio and he's the coolest he's my cousin um, oh, really? <laughs> yeah. nice Ben's the best <laughs> yeah, um, and, uh, and so yeah so we're putting out those these four songs on Give Us a Raise in April and then in October we're going to be putting out another one called Loser and, uh, and yeah so this is going to be a song off the one coming out in April or not in April in October that is mostly done so alright uh, this is a song called Rip um, how that song starts.
that dude nice. was well explained. I'm sorry. That is that song hasn't been played a whole lot lately since we recorded it a while ago, and so. But there's I, there's like four songs that we can play that's just me, and the rest of it is because. Sorry, we try to in- incorporate all three of us as much as possible, and so there's like. Oh, there's about, not many songs you can do our, by yourself. Right, yeah. exactly. So, and, sorry to make you uh, do no, that. No, 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 it's fine. It's it's cool. So I was. That's got a cool sound. Do man. that. Thanks. It, I, um, it's got a sort of was, retro Crosby <laughs> Stills type. <laughs> I, was, I was actually listening to a lot of ACDC when that record came out. <laughs> um, for about. Actually, for about a year now, the only CD I've had in my car is Back in Black, and. Um, <laughs> So you know, it's, I it's wouldn't have picked the ACDC. Would you guys um, pick that? Uh, no. The 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 riff is like partially ripping off Hell's Bells. Nice. And so don't say that. What was yeah. going on? Now? Yeah, you know, it's cool. <laughs> and it's, not, it's not close yeah. enough. Well, you know, I don't think it's gonna, it's close enough for like a Pharrell situation here, like with blurred lines that just happened. But you know, but uh, but no, it's so yeah. I was rolling with the ACDC situation, and I don't know. It kind of yeah. It, Sounds a lot better with the full band, but you're know. still good. Oh, Thanks, yeah. I really yeah. appreciate it. Cool. <laughs> I appreciate Does that ever happen to you guys? I mean, Andrew or, 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 or you, Sam, when you're on stage and you suddenly forget what the hell you're supposed Fuck to be yeah. saying? Oh, that happens. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I'm expecting it to happen at my gig tomorrow where I'm going to be in the middle of a song and be like, I have no idea what the fuck the lines are to this song. Shit up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You just can like you do that on the fly? You're playing and you uh, can just... Find a word that rhymes. Yeah. yeah. What else are you going to do? That's I'm, kind of, I'm kind of at a point where like I just start mumbling syllables that are going to sound like they're like supposed to be there. Like There's a song off of our first record that I don't remember any of about the second half of the second verse. And so I just kind of make stuff up every single gig and I've just been going with that lately. Yeah. Just because <laughs> Especially if you rock, you know, just turn the guitar off. Right, exactly. Yeah. You know, just like yeah. turn the fuzz on a little bit early and you're mm-hmm. like, oh, cool, yeah, y'all know what I'm saying. Yeah. Sure, go for it. Hey, so if, <laughs> if anyone's uh, listening to this wandering around the park or, you know, uh, working out or something where they can't write anything down or can't get to our website where we have links to the stuff, where can people steal your music from? Oh, uh, you can steal my music from anywhere you like. No, um, we're on Spotify, we're on iTunes, we're on Bandcamp. We are pretty much everywhere that you can get music online. Uh, Phantom Foxes with... Can anyone pay for it if they You want? can pay for it on iTunes, and Bandcamp is pay what you want. It is uh, pretty fantastic. So if you want... Most of our music on there is a pay what you want situation, or it's like okay. you can pay like $5 for this or more. It's a situation. So, you know, we're... Um, I've got... A, we've got physical copies available on our website if you want to hit us up uh, which is just bantamfoxes.com okay uh, yeah you know thank you very much thank you all for, for having down. me and Mac we can find your stuff at ihatemystepdad.com one of the best URLs yeah. in the history of you the can internet check us out follow us if you have a complaint about your stepdad uh, you can email us we'll we'll try to do what we can uh, <laughs> well, that's very kind of you <laughs> I mean, yeah. you have a service <laughs> uh, you know, it's it's we're figuring it out. I mean, I'll, I'll, pretty much me. Yeah, we haven't had any complaints about stepdad. Can yet, I see so. the movie, Sam? What are you gonna say? Go well, ahead. I'm just saying. I mean, you could turn that into like text from last night situation. Where yeah. it's like, <laughs> right. I hate my stepdad, and have these like stupid right. anecdotes. Yeah, well, funny. we would do we would do hashtag I hate my stepdad on tw- on Twitter, and then you look at hashtags of I hate my stepdad, and oh. it's not that. Yeah, it it's not pretty. angry yeah, teenagers. That's a, that is yeah. A, yeah. 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 Really? So, yeah. but yeah, I hate my stepdad.com. So, can we see the movie? Can I pay for it on Netflix or something? Or? Not yet. Get, we're working on that right now. So, I, okay. I think it, I think it, it'll be around, actually, around Father's Day in June. Uh, we're perfect. Oh, how perfect is that? Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mac yeah. Ellsfeld, thank you so much for joining yeah, us. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for Sam having Sam McCabe us. and Rosemary Kimball, we can find your stuff if we're not too late. If we're listening uh, to this before Friday, March the 20th, we can go down to One Eye Jacks, isn't it? Yep, tomorrow night. Where the show's at. Otherwise, where do we find your stuff? Um, you can find anything at enrapturingentertainment.com. I and have two body paint shows. Wait up. Enrapturing Entertainment. Enrapturingentertainment.com. Okay, okay. Well, that's interesting. Yeah. So there's more than just body painting. In ra- yeah, there's all kinds of things. Costume art, and I hire other artists for events all over the place. and. Okay. Festivals. Oh, cool. And <laughs> all right. Well, guys, thank you all so much. That was a good. Thank you for having us. Yeah. And let fun. me also thank introduce you. you to Andrew Duhon, uh, who just got back. Yeah, man. Good to be back. Okay, good to see. Yeah, I yeah. was in Lafayette actually a couple of weeks ago, and I, I ran to someone called, and they do pronounce it Duyon, Duyon. Duyon yeah. up there. Yeah. Uh, that's it. Gerald Duyon. That's the way he pronounces it. Is he related to you? Probably. Probably is. <laughs> all right. 
Thank you so much, everybody, Thank for you. being here. That's Happy Thank Hour you. for another week. The producer of our show is Graham DuPonte. Our associate producer and technical director is Chris Kehoe. Christian Unruh is our music director, and our theme music was written by and is currently being played by Mitch Foreman. The fabulous audio quality of this show is brought to you in part by Pre-Sonus Audio Electronics, except for this piece of shit thing that stopped working when <laughs> started. If you'd like to be on our show and you can sit around a table for about an hour and have a drink, drop us a line. Our address is on our website. It's called itsneworleans.com, where you'll also find other happy hours to listen to, as well as some other shows we make here. Out to Lunch with Peter Rashidi, which is live from Commander's Palace Mindset with psychiatrist Dr. Nick Pajic. True to the game, true to the game, <laughs> with the fabulous Chris True. Midnight Menu Plus One with Margot Moss and the man who ate New Orleans, Ray Canato, Louisiana Eats with Poppy Tooker, and the revolutionary new way to buy a house in New Orleans, Unlisted Nola. Keep up with us on Facebook, on Twitter, and a bunch of other times sucking social media as well. On all of it, we're called It's New Orleans. You can find photos from this show on itsneworleans.com and on our Facebook and Google Plus pages. Find out what we all look like. If you're listening to this show on iTunes or Stitcher or some other podcast app, thank you very much for subscribing to it. Take one minute to stop everything and rate and review us. That really helps other people find us and maybe get us paid even. Now, our show is recorded live today at Wayfair, which is on Ferret Street in Uptown New Orleans, where they put fine dining into a sandwich and fine booze into a glass. Happy Hour is a production of INO Broadcasting for itsneworleans.com, for Andrew Duhon, for Graham DuPonty, for all of us sitting around here at Wayfair, and everybody back at the INO office, thank you so much for joining me. I'm Grant Morris. We'll see you back here next week on Happy Hour. Geico presents oh, yet another voicemail from your roommate. Hi. So, about the kitchen. Turns out when there's a grease fire, you're not supposed to throw water on it. <laughs> Who would have known, right? Anyways, the fire department is here, and it's totally cool. Give me a call back when you get a chance. The Geico Insurance Agency could help keep your personal property protected. Like if danger is your roommate's middle name. Visit geico.com to see how easy it is to switch and save on renter's insurance.